What's up, what's going on people of YouTube? Definitely gamers out there. It's going on both my channels, my hobby channel and my gaming channel. So what's up to both my people out there? Here with the Alienware 18 laptop and I'm here to tell you guys, let you guys know, is it worth it? Is it worth your hard earned money to, in today's time? Um, this laptop came out in 2014. So first and foremost, let's look at the specs, look up under the hood and see the hardware that's pushing the software. You can either find that within the settings and stuff inside the computer or you can look up under the laptop and it has every single thing you need to know. I didn't even notice that at first when I first was looking up underneath the, the uh, laptop. It shows dual uh, 880Ms and everything. So um, it shows every single thing you need to know as far as specs. but everything is maxed out completely. Here's my son right here playing up on it. You know, you see we got the Xbox wire controller plugged up to the bad boy. So, you know, it's like a regular PC plugged the controller up and it just, you know, plays, no problem. Steam games, got my whole Steam library. So you see it's at 80 something frames. I got close up to the screen right here so I can see the graphics. See how clear it is. Pretty clear screen. You see the glare from my window. Bam. Uh, dying light. I about to say Dishonored. Dishonored 2. I can get uh, the open up on here for some reason. But uh, Dying Light 2. I mean, Dying Light, I mean, not 2. But you see 50, 60 frames per second. 50. It's, it, I get around 55 to 60 frames per second inside this game uh, on average. So that's good. Is that 70 right now? 80? Hovering around 75. Trying to shoot her in the back of the head. Zombie, that is. I don't know why you're trying to say nothing. At 80, 90, 90 something frames. The thing about this game, too, I don't know if it's a, uh, a driver issue or something like that, or it's my son now on the, uh, on the game. But uh, when the zombies grab you inside this game, that's when I get like real choppiness and it's like cutscenes. It's super, super choppy. Like I'm getting like 10 or 15 frames per second. But other than that, Dying Light runs real good up on here. And the lights react to, the Alienware lights react to the game itself. So that's dope. So here we are with uh, Fallout 4. You know, I haven't played this game in a very, very, very long time. Every single DLC that came out with this game, I haven't even had a chance to play it. I just didn't get on it to play it. But anyways, I average around 40 frames per second inside this game, 45 to 55 frames. You know, um, this game is kind of hard to run Fallout 4, but like I said, it's all maxed out. So, 50 frames. See how good it looks. And Bethesda games don't allow you to go above 60 frames per second, just for the record. Anyways, we're here with some um, Dead Island, you know. And this is another game I'm trying to beat. You know, I got all the Dead Island games, but you know, I'm a, I'm a completionist. I like to complete my game, so I wouldn't even install. I'd probably buy a game because it's on sale, but I wouldn't even install it because I gotta complete some other games first. I'm really critical when it comes, I'm really strict on myself when it comes to stuff like that. But anyways, I'm getting uh, 55, 60 frames.
I hate those damn things. You gotta use a sword with these damn zombies, those ones. Cuphead, of course you can, it runs cu Cuphead easy. You know, this game ain't really no demanding game. I want to pop it up anyways. Cause it looks cool on the Alienware. Cause the Alienware got the cool lights and stuff like that. Bam, what this is. Yeah, you know, Skyrim. You know what I'm saying? What y'all know about that Skyrim? But anyways, 60 frames per second. I get I get it above 60 inside this game, but you know, Bethesda games will allow you to uh, scale higher than that. So I don't know why. I know there's probably a mod. Speaking of mods, I am running mods inside this game. But yeah, you see the game looks good. Stays at 60 no matter what I do inside fights and everything. Stays at 60. It's another game on it. I need to get back inside, you know, the universe. Boom, Resident Evil 5. I just popped this on just for the hell of it. One of my favorite Resident Evil games. I know a lot of people didn't like this game, but my favorite is 4. My second favorite is 2. And my third favorite is this game. It's just when this game first came out, it was way ahead of its time, in my opinion, as far as graphics and animation. Like, when this game, when the demo came out, it blew my mind, like, how good it looked on, you know, on the consoles. So, you see, I'm getting 120 frames per second easy, you know. I get around 100 to 150-something frames per second inside this game. So, this damn laptop slaps the shit out this game. Like, I wish I had a 120 uh, hertz screen monitor to take advantage of, you know, the high frame rates. All right, so next up is a game that I forgot to actually do voiceover for, so I'm doing it right now, right in the middle of my editing, and that is Stalker Clear Sky with the uh, complete mod. Now, this game is an old game. Um, it took me a while for me to get back in to get into this game when I first picked this game up when I barely built my PC. As you can see, I'm getting a decent frame rate. I couldn't wait to try this game out to see the frame rates I'm getting inside this game because this game is kind of a demanding game. Here's my settings. I got it set to um, anti-aliasing times uh, two at first, but I went ahead and set it to four, as you can see. Just so, you can so I, just so I can show you guys, I'm still getting major frame rates, even with the anti-aliasing all the way up. See, 80 something frames per second. That's even inside the gameplay and everything. And when I first built my gaming PC, my desktop, um, I wasn't getting these frame rates. I was getting around like 50 to 60, 45, and stuff like that maxed out. So, this so laptop is kicking ass. So, best for last, Crisis. You know, so this is Crisis 1 max settings, you know what I'm saying? I know y'all ain't gonna believe it, but you know, I'm gonna pop it up in a, in a moment, you know, don't worry about nothing, but you know, this is all maxed out. Everything to the max, like every single thing. I even had anti-aliasing times four. You know, I was still, I was only losing about 10 frames, about seven to 10 frames. I turned to the times two, and you know, and it brought me up some frames, so that's good. But as you can see, this, look at this, 60, 64 frames per second. Right here, this whole little area, I'm around 75 to 80. Look at that detail, boy. They tell me they ain't maxed out. That's max settings, crisis one. Even though this is a cutscene, this is an in-game cutscene. This is all in-game animated, you know what I'm saying? This is not no, you know, video. It's a video, but it's, it's an in-engine.
So, you know, bam, everything maxed out, but hold on, that ain't it, let me go to advanced. I know people are gonna be like, hold on, let me see, let me see everything. Okay, bam, there it is. Everything very high, maxed out, maxed out. Boom, let me click on it real fast. Click on it real fast, boom, let y'all know, it's all maxed out, boom. Uh-huh, let me go ahead and apply it too, just, just for the record, bam, boom. So, yeah, man, so just, just, this game alone impressed me just to have this maxed out. I'm ha very happy, you know, satisfied. And it's doing a good job with it. So let's go ahead and grab my notepad and look over my notes and see what I've written down for my review on this laptop. Is it worth your buy for today's time? Especially with the price that it is still right now, around two thousand, eighteen hundred to two thousand dollars, from what I see. Um, you can get one that's a little bit spec, a little bit lower, and get it for about fifteen hundred. I got those both inside the description. But um, with that being said, build quality. Solid build made of all metal feels like we have a damn tank or a fortress right in front of you like this damn thing is solid built um, screen housing build quality is the best I've ever seen so um, it feels like you can somebody can accidentally drop something on, on top of your laptop when it's closed and it wouldn't even damage like nothing wouldn't even happen with the screen or anything like that that's how good that screen housing is it really impressed me at first the macbook pro was my favorite screen housing but now you know i got to give it to alienware with this laptop is crazy i could talk forever about the build quality but i just want to give you guys the bare minimum across all these different uh categories because i want this video to be too long and just give you guys enough to for you to know exactly what you're getting yourself into anyways over to the keyboard the keyboard area isn't flimsy whatsoever um that's another thing i thought was flimsy when it comes to these big laptops all that is solid because why it's made of metal i'm like what this laptop is like it feels like it's a fortress when you every time you open it up like if it's your first big laptop gaming laptop at that every time you open it for the first 50 times you're just gonna smile like it's, it's just stupid now this is another thing when it comes to gaming laptops the keyboard you know because i'm real critical when it comes to my keyboard a lot of people don't get it right the keyboards that everybody else like i don't like you know i'm real critical when it comes to my keyboard the keys feels and sounds because that's the main thing two factors that i really really have must have inside my keyboards and and they never get two of those together either they get the sound right and get the feel wrong or get the feel right and the sound wrong the kill the keys feel and sound 100 percent exactly how i love my keyboard to sound and feel and what i mean by that is it's quiet completely quiet no none of that clicking is everybody like that clicky stuff i don't i like my keys to be silent but people like those keys where like those tall keys i don't like those and i don't like long travel I like medium travel so this thing has it all it's low profile you know i still like the macbook pro low pro profile keys people don't like those i like my keys low profile like that so they're low profile still you know medium travel soft press and they're and they're quiet that's like everything i'll ever dream this out of keyboard that's that's crazy next category of this review lights now i absolutely love the lighting features and options with this laptop so when i finally got the laptop and got into the app for adjusting the lights and stuff like that and configuring and saving custom settings and stuff a kid can use this thing you know use the app it's, it's super easy you're pretty much clicking on what you want to change the color to clicking on the color boom that's it the only way it gets real advanced and confusing is when you want to have them strobing and have them you want to have this light strobing have this one flashing and just to make different uh patterns of lights and stuff flickering here and there that's when it gets kind of confusing that's when you really got to sit down and it's not really confusing but it takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of uh practice and a little bit of um once you do something, test it out, and then re reconfigure it and test that out, and then reconfigure it. It's a lot of testing and you know readjusting. That's all. That, that's all it is. A lot of patience. But um, I downloaded a whole bunch of Alienware backgrounds, screen savers, and stuff like that, and I just I saved a whole bunch of um, presets of lights catered to match the background of my laptop. So every time I open my laptop up, I can have it a different color every single day if I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? By saving different configurations that matches my background. So, man, that's dope. <laughs> now, over to the screen. Screen quality. 
screen is very sharp uh but the colors do look a little bit washed out and other people have said this about the alienware uh 18 inch laptop and the 17 inch i believe um depends on which one you got as far as the screen but um yeah man this it is kind of uh, washed out a little bit when you that's the first thing you're going to notice you can adjust the colors of course inside the pc uh, settings but that doesn't adjust the in-game colors and stuff like that i just adjust the desktop stuff like that and i know there's ways you can go into the graphics uh, amplifier and adjusted settings and colors and stuff like that too if you really really wanted to that's not really something that's a game changer and it doesn't it's not really a huge thing that you really really notice but the colors could be a little bit more deep and saturated that's all that is it's a little bit of pinch but that's all it needs but it makes up for it for how clear and sharp it is you know that's where it makes up that's how you really don't really pay no pay no attention after like a few seconds like it's just so damn sharp and clear it's like now, as far as the specifications of the screen, it's only a 1080p 60 hertz uh, monitor, but um, it's a 14, I'm not 14, 18.4 inch uh, monitor. So um, it really, really immerses you into the game and makes you forget that you're gaming on on a, on a laptop. You know, that's another thing that kept making me smile. Like, this is the bro, this is the laptop. Like, damn. Now over to the performance. Now I already talked about the specs inside there. That's the first thing I got written down on the performance. I already talked about that, covered that already. Now one thing I wanted to know, does it, just like my MacBook Pro 15 inch, does it support HDMI out to my widescreen monitor, which is 21 by nine with a uh, resolution by, uh, with a resolution of, I mean, uh, 2560 by 1080 P. Does it support it? Yes, the fuck it does. Excuse my French for anybody that may be watching that don't like cussing, but goddamn, this motherfucker, no latency whatsoever, no lag, no, not, I didn't even drop any frames. If I did lose any frames, it was about four frames, you know, four to six frames. So I hooked up Borderlands 2 again, as you can see, and you know, I just turned my screen brightness all the way down on my Mac, well, not my Mac, I said my MacBook. I'm so used to doing that with my MacBook, but my Alienware laptop, you know what I'm saying? Um, and boom it has it where you can mirror it too so you can still play on your macbook if you want to oh, i can say macbook alienware if you want to but just so it can push all that power out to the you know wide widescreen monitor i went ahead and set the setting to where it disables the um you know display on a uh, computer on a uh, laptop and just run it out through the hdmi so i wasn't getting no frame rate dips or nothing i was just thinking about should i sell my widescreen monitor or just keep it for my editing i know i'm gonna keep it for my editing you know what i'm saying because to have that widescreen monitor all that extra real estate is, is amazing for your timeline and you know i'm about to, i'm of course i'm gonna download my sony vegas on this uh laptop as well and you know so definitely be keeping my widescreen monitor now that i know that the alienware can you know output that so i'm happy and there's other games I haven't even showed you guys yet, which I'm going to do a, probably another video of another batch of games to show that this, what this computer can do with it. But yeah, a lot of these games I was getting nothing but 60 to 90 frames per second, constant. And on top of that, there's not that many laptops in the world that, when I say in the world, I mean in the world, you know, literally, that you can upgrade, fully upgradable. You know, um, you got to upgrade the graphics inside here, the motherboard, you upgrade the the RAM, the storage, anything you want to upgrade, you can upgrade inside this bad boy, anything. So, you know, I wonder if the screen is easily easily upgradable. Cause if that's if that's the case, I'm getting me a 120 hertz screen and that's gonna be, I'm gonna be happy with that. I don't need no 4K screen for no laptop gaming. You know, I do that with the big boys. So with this being fully upgradable, let's say there's games that's coming out that's kind of pushing this Alienware to its limits. I can upgrade to two 980Ms. I get around the same performance as a graphics card that just came out today. So that's all I wanted. If something was gonna replace my gaming desktop, you know, at least for a while, it needed to be upgradable. It needed to be huge. You know, I don't care about it being big. Everybody talking about, oh, it's big. I don't care. You know, <laughs> speaking of it being big, check out the size comparison. As you can see, compared to the MacBook Pro, this thing shadows it. You know, um, the silver part on bottom of the Alienware laptop is as big as the whole MacBook Pro. The screen of the Alienware laptop is as thick as the MacBook Pro. We ain't even talking about the body. We talking about the MacBook Pro closed up. So I got a few shots inside here. This here you can see how mind blowing. Cause people don't, I don't think, cause it blew my mind how big this thing is. Cause on videos, people's videos, you still cannot see how big it is on YouTube. Like there's no possible way. But the way I filmed it, you know, I popped up a few shots so you can give you a sense of scale when it comes to how big this is. Cause you know, the 15 inch MacBook Pro isn't small. 
you know it's thin but it's not small it's not like it's a small screen it's a 15 inch screen 15.3 or something inch screen so um and then counting the bezel so just keep that in mind the 15 inch isn't small it's just thin if, if you go to somebody's house that got wood floors or marble floors or some type of hard floor you might not drop this laptop and i ain't talking about because for the laptop's sake i'm talking about for them for their sake you know what i'm saying I'm gonna tear them damn floors up boy <laughs> And last but not least, to close this video out, let's talk about the backpack. Extreme, good quality, well-made, sturdy, heavy-duty, comfortable, and stylish. That's all written down in my notes because that was all the things I've noticed. Because at first I wasn't even giving the bag any attention at first. I kind of was because that was the thing that kind of put the icing on the cake. I'm like, oh yeah. But looking at this bag and really using it and checking out the different compartments and stuff like that and the zipper quality and the material quality that's the number one thing is material what materials are they using you know is, are they using breathable mesh inside certain parts are they using you know material that's going that's going to last for a long time are they using sweat resistant material are they using water resistant material they're using all those materials on this backpack they 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 sure took every last dollar of that hundred dollars that this bag costs and really put it into the bag. I really feel like this bag is worth, to my opinion, I wouldn't be selling this damn bag for no damn hundred dollars. This bag is easily worth like two hundred dollars, easy. Right? This is nowhere near no cheap backpack. No, no matter what part of it that you touch is nowhere near cheap to the point where you see how I'm popping up the close-up shot of the buckle that holds the ribbon through there. Right? That buckle is not plastic. I thought it was plastic. That is metal. That is a metal, uh, I don't know if those are called, but that's metal. I had to hit something against it to make sure I wasn't tripping. Even on premium backpacks that cost a lot of money, those are still plastic. So now you get what I'm saying. I'm not just tooting their horn. I don't work for Alienware. You know, they can they can break me off with some products though and to review since I'm doing a good job, you know, with their product reviewing this. So I'm happy, I'm satisfied. I got the whole thing for 700 and um, 54.25 as you can see on the receipt um the reason why i say i got the laptop for 600 dollars is because the bag cost itself it costs around 100 dollars and then the fan that it came with um as well it came with a huge fan that you can set your laptop on top of that's around i know that's around like 40 30 bucks so i went ahead and shaved that off the total price and bam 600 dollars Every site I've been looking on has been around $2,000. The cheapest I've seen it was around $1,700. So with that being said, people of YouTube, it's me, your boy, The Hobby Collector, aka The Universal Gamer. And I hope you guys like this video. Yes, this is expensive. You are not gonna find this. Uh, I hope, I wish everybody could find this for $600, $700, but you're not gonna find it, not even for $1,000. Thank you, Lord. And thank you guys for watching. I'm out.